Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis continuing our discussion about pulmonology. This is the fourth video in this amazing playlist. We have talked about anatomy in the previous two videos and then in the third video it was the Fercos node. Today we'll talk about respiratory histology. It's gonna be easy but we'll take it to the next level and make it clinically oriented and high yield and all of this fun stuff. With that being said, now let's get started. Now let me answer case 3 and case 4 from the second video. CAO went to visit the CFO in his house to discuss the latest shady accounting practices that were published in the national newspaper this morning. After a heated discussion and lots of cursing, the CFO grabbed a 4.5 inch kitchen knife, that's a kind of a long knife, stabbed the CEO in the chest, the knife passed just to the left of the sternum and pierced the chief, chief executive's chest at the left fourth intercostal space along the left sternal border. The accountant immediately regrets it, blah blah blah, and then only few drops of blood came out. Called 911, the ambulance took the executive on the way to the hospital. He did not he did not complain of shortness of breath, and that's a very important clue. And the trachea was central. He arrived at the ER and suddenly he was short of breath, semi-conscious and in shock. Two minutes later he gasped for air, became unconscious and died. What's the most likely cause of death? Now please pause, and the answer here is cardiac tamponade. Oh, why not pulmonary contusion? All right. So this is a surface anatomy question. So here is your sternum. All right, crazy sternum. Forgive me. All right, and uh, this is a void process, and then the ribs. All right, until we go to this fourth left intercostal space. So here's here's this is the second rib so this is one two three and four along the sternal border now according to surface anatomy the pleura the, the pleura goes like this all right but the lung goes like this there's a cardiac notch Ooh, so it didn't touch the lung yes it touched the pleura but it didn't touch the lung so why not tension pneumothorax since it has touched the pleura? Two reasons. First, the trachea was central. And th second, he did not complain of shorts of breath. And this is not tension pneumothorax. It's cardiac tamponade. All right, let me tell you the story. He was stabbed by the knife. And the knife was at the left fourth intercostal space. Okay, fine. This is how the knife went. The knife went inside the chest in the fourth intercostal space through the right ventricle because it makes the the most of the anterior surface of the wall then the left ventricle and the aortic vestibule just below the aortic orifice so here is the aorta just below the orifice so this will lead to what massive bleeding it will accumulate in what in the pericardial sac and then it will increase and increase and increase and then it will start causing symptoms how it's tamponade, right? It blocks the venous drainage. Yes. Loss of cardiac output. Yes, because there is no um, input. Therefore, there is no output. And when you lose the cardiac output, there is less blood going to the lung. That's why he gasped for breath before death. Then he lost consciousness. Why? Because there is no cardiac output going to the brain. Next case is four. One and a half year old boy started choking. He couldn't cough it out. His mother tried the Heimlich maneuver to get this uh, uh, foreign body outside. And then the toddler seemed to improve and stopped coughing, which is excellent. 45 seconds later, he started coughing again, was gasping for breath. So this is dyspnea. She took him to the ER. The doctor asked her, did he swallow any foreign body? She remembered that there were some peanuts. Which of the following is a possible complication of the peanut inhalation? Now pause. And the answer is G, both B and F. Let's start with B. Obstructive atelectasis of a segment in the right lower lobe because it doesn't tell us the position of the baby, so it's probably upright. When it's upright, as you know, this right main bronchus is more vertical. So the peanut is going to land in the right lung. Which part? Right lower lobe. And this is called gravity, baby. The right upper will happen if the kid was 
laying down on his right side of the chest. But the question didn't mention this, so we have to assume he was upright, because it's most likely. Now, F is the chemical bronchitis in the lung, because the peanut will land here in the segment and will, will block a bronchiole or a bronchus, and then it will start like fragmenting, and all of these chemicals will go causing irritation called chemical pneumonitis, so the answer is both B and F obstructive atelectasis and chemical bronchitis. Now, why did the kid initially seem to improve and stop coughing? Because the peanut passed the carina, and the carina is the last part that has cough reflex. Now, let's talk about your normal lung. What is the main job of the lung? If you say to get oxygen in, you're stupid. I'm sorry, forgive the language. The main job of the lung is to get carbon dioxide out. I thought that well, like the lung was there to give me oxygen. That's true, but this is not the number one priority. The number one priority is to get carbon dioxide out. Second priority, to get carbon dioxide out. Third priority, to get carbon dioxide out, and then to get oxygen in. I don't believe you. Okay, let's say that you have a patient, and initially the oxygen saturation was 97, and it dropped all the way to 93%. Oh, big deal. It's not fun, it's not good, but he's not gonna die. Okay, on the other hand, let's say that your pH was 7.4, which is normal. And then it dropped to 6.5. You're what's known as dead. What? It's, it's just less than one. Yes, but life is only possible within a very narrow range of pH change. Change the pH too much, either up or down, and you will die. You are only compatible with life between 7 and 7.7 .7 pH. Less than that, you die from acidosis. More than that, you die from alkalosis. So carbon dioxide is very crucial. But I don't understand why is carbon dioxide related to acid. Because your lung is wet. It has water. CO2 plus water equals carbonic acid, H2CO3, which will give us, you know this, remember this? the acid, the protons, and then HCO3. You remember the name of the enzyme? Carbonic anhydrase. Okay, cool. So now I get it. The main job of the lung is to get carbon dioxide out because this is how we regulate the acid-base balance. Yes, if the lung retains the CO2 in, it will lead to respiratory acidosis because CO2 is considered an acid. If the lung keeps pushing the CO2 out more than normal, <sighs> wash out the CO2, <laughs> this is called hyperventilation, you're losing the acid, which is a state of respiratory alkalosis. Functions of the respiratory system, this is so easy, regulation of acid-base balance, regulation of water balance, uh, defense against pathogens, help venous return, also known as respiratory pump, because the negative intrathoracic pressure in the pleura is negative, so it sucks blood up, it pulls it up. So, let's say that you have the pressure in the pleura is less negative. It's not that good of a negative. So let's say COPD, corpulmonary, pulmonary hypertension, or P, pos positive end expiratory pressure. It will make the endothoracic pressure less negative, decrease venous return, it will can lead to ankle edema. That's why patients with COPD can get ankle edema. So your ankle is very low there, and your lung is up there, but they are related to each other. Welcome to internal medicine. Next, you have activation of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, vocalization and olfaction. Without my respiratory system, metacosis perfectionalis would have never existed. Let's talk about regulation of acid-base balance. Respiratory alkalosis or acidosis? In case of respiratory acidosis, what's the definition of acidosis? Low pH. What's the definition of respiratory acidosis? High PCO2 because PCO2 is considered an acid. Why high HCO3? The lung I'm sorry, the kidney is trying to make you alkalotic in order to compensate for this respiratory acidosis. Respiratory alkalosis, you will see the opposite. High pH, why? Because high pH is the definition of alkalosis. Low PCO2, why? Because PCO2 is an acid. When you have less acid, it's a state of alkalosis caused by the lung respiratory alkalosis. The kidney will try to compensate by getting rid of the alkali because you're alkalotic when you get rid of the alkali you can improve and mitigate and ameliorate the alkalosis types of respiration external and internal external ventilation which means getting air into the lung 
perfusion, which means getting blood towards the lung. And then diffusion, the oxygen going from here to here and the CO2 going from the blood to the outside. This is called gas exchange. And then there is internal or cellular respiration and this is at the level of the cell. Mitochondria and the electron transport chain, we use oxygen to form ATP and you remember all of this electrons and proton pumping and all of this crazy stuff. Most of you think that for me to have hypoxia, the cause has to be related to the ventilation and perfusion, which is not true. You can cause toxicity to the cell and it can lead to hypoxia. Do you remember carbon monoxide poisoning, cyanide poisoning? I've talked about all of this in my hematology playlist and I also have a playlist called emergency medicine. We have discussed these topics before. So cellular poisons can lead to hypoxia. It doesn't have to be related to the lung. Upper versus lower respiratory tract, this is, uh, I don't care. So, conducting zone, which is a dead space because there is no gas exchange, and then respiratory zone. Conducting zone from the tip of the nose all the way to the terminal bronchioles. So you have tip of the nose, then you have the nasopharynx, then you have the larynx, and then after the larynx you have the trachea, you have the two main stem bronchi, after bronchi you have bronchioles, all the way to the terminal bronchioles, but not the respiratory bronchioles respiratory zone from the respiratory bronchioles it's called respiratory zone so it starts with the respiratory bronchioles all the way to the alveolar so respiratory bronchioles and then they have uh, the alveolar duct alveolar sac and alveoli and all of this fun stuff so conducting zone terminates with the terminal bronchioles respiratory zone starts with the respiratory bronchioles cartilage and goblet cell if your name is bronchus you have cartilage and goblet cell you have pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cell. The only sentence that I still remember from my histology classes. Bronchioles, no cartilage and no goblet cell. If it has an O, it's gotta be no. Respiratory zone is busy with gas exchange. It doesn't need cartilage or goblet cell. Epithelium, here we have the bronchi, pseudostratified ciliated columnar with goblet cell because they're gonna secrete lots of mucus, they need the cell to be columnar because squamous cell don't secrete anything, there is no space in them to store the secretory granules but columnar can secrete lots of fun stuff and you need to secrete lots of mucus. Bronchioles, up until the terminal bronchioles, which is the end of the conducting zone, have pseudostratified ciliated columnar. In the respiratory zone, respiratory bronchioles, you have cuboidal cells. Cells start to get smaller. Why? Because we need gas exchange, we need a bigger surface area in the alveoli, and we need those cells that line the alveoli to be as small as possible. And then, as you see here, the type 1 pneumocytes are actually squamous. They are flat to allow for maximum space for gas exchange, because these cells, if they are big, they will obstruct the gas exchange, which is bad. However, type 2 pneumocytes are cuboidal. Why? because they will secrete, they have secretory granules, they will secrete the surf actant, which is a great name because it means it's anti-surface tension. Surface tension wants your lung to collapse. Surfactants keep your lung patent. Blood supply, this is supplied by the bronchial circulation. This is supplied by the pulmonary circulation. That's why infarction to your lung is very unlikely if your lung is normal because you have two blood supplies. Even if you tampered with this one, this one is still working. But if your lung is already screwed and you occluded another vessel, you can get an infarction. All right, here is number one. Number two, infarction of the lung. Is it pale or is it red? The answer is red. It's a hemorrhagic infarction because if you block this one, this gun can still bleed, causing the tissue to be red, called hemorrhagic or red infarction. Next, let's say that we have this artery going to the lung and then we'll branch, all right? And then the artery will branch. As you see here, everything is a triangle. So if you occlude this, the infarction is going to look like the shape of the triangle. This is really important. And if you have uh, looked at like pathology samples, like growth samples, you will see the infarction looking like a triangle beautifully. I'm sorry, it's not that beautiful because the patient already died. No alveoli, no gas exchange. If you have alveoli, of course you're gonna have gas exchange. Function, warms and humidifies mucus. All right. Pneumocytes, we have type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes. Type 1 has one function, which is gas exchange. Therefore, the shape is squamous because 
we would like to give all of the space to guest exchange. We do not like to obstruct the space or the interface. Type 2 nemocytes has two functions. Regeneration, it's a stem cell, and surfactant production, which is an anti-surface tension. That's why it's cubical. It's not columnar because we need the space. It's not squamous because squamous don't secrete anything. It's kind of the in-between and has some granules. Those are the secretory granules because it's going to secrete the surfactant. Defensive function, the alveolar macrophages are also known as dust cells. The mucos, the mucus escalator, so here is the trick, yes, it works like an escalator. It pushes up, pushes up, beats it up, beats it up until the foreign body goes out. So it's an escalator. This one, we'll give it to the next one, we'll give it to the next one, we'll give it to the next one. It's beautiful. If you smoke cigarettes, why would you do this with your life? It's going to damage this mucus escalator. You'll have lots of stuff because the what's inhaled is going to stay. You're having trouble getting it out and it's horrible. And it can lead to COPD. You know what we call it when you can't get the air out? Obstructive lung disease. Club cells or clarocells found in the bronchioles. Bronchiolar exocrine cells. They are dome shaped with short microvilli. So Clara cell is the same as club cell. If you're watching this video and your name is Clara and you happen to be a member of any club, please let me know down below in the comment. Function, we love Clara. Why? Because she secretes lots of fun stuff. Glycosaminoglycans, as well as uteroglobin. Detoxifies harmful substance thanks to the cytochrome P450 in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. It also acts as a stem cell, multiplying and differentiating into ciliated cells to regenerate the bronchiolar epithelium. So, the stem cell of the bronchi is Clara cell. The stem cell of the alveoli is the type 2 nomocyte. This is really important to understand. If you're struggling to memorize Staph aureus, Streptococcus, Pneumonia, and Legionella, and Mycoplasma, and all of this crazy stuff, check out my friend's website. It's called Picmonic. The link is in the description. It's like an animated medical mnemonics. It's amazing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can support this channel and get all of my notes and all of my cases and all of my comparison tables and all of the fun stuff. Patreon.com slash Medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfect Channels where medicine makes perfect sense. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.